Episode 134, Sean Harris and Jen Morales. Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn and you're on Gut Plus Science. This podcast is on a mission to increase engagement at work. And on this show, we equip CEOs and people first leaders of all levels to make impact. Let's get to it. Hey, Gut Plus Science peeps, today is a special episode on the topic of purposeful inclusion. And these two guests really made me think about the way I think of inclusion from a macro and micro perspective. I love when these episodes challenge me, and this one did that. I am choosing my words much more intentionally since this discussion. Today, I'm joined by two passionate people first leaders, Sean Harris and Jen Morales. Listen into the detail they put into their inclusion efforts at Starbucks Technology. They're really doing something special. Sean, Jen, welcome to Gut Plus Science. It's a rare treat for me to get to collaborate with two conscious leaders at the same time on this show and to get insights and mentorship from people first leaders behind the admirable Starbucks brand. I'm so grateful. First, I'd love to have you tell us about Starbucks technology, the entity, and your top priorities in your people first leadership efforts this year. I'd love to have both of you share on this. Jen, do you want to kick us off? Yes. Thank you so much, Nikki. We're super excited to be here today. You know, we at Starbucks Technology uh, have pulled together our own inclusion and diversity mission statement. And that's really stating that we aspire to be an inclusive and diverse organization possessing a community that all partners would recommend as a great place in which to work. Um, a culture that provides partners the opportunity to flourish, and leaders who lead vulnerably, uh, consistently seeking feedback. So you'll hear us talk more about partners in a little bit, but this is really kind of our driving mission and focus for putting our people first. Yeah. And, and Nikki, I've been in um, in cybersecurity now for 28 years through a lot of different verticals. I've worked at a lot of different companies. And I found my home at Starbucks in a company that actually lives their mission and values every day. It is, it's heartwarming to work for a, a company like that. And when, when you look at our mission statement, uh, we're inspiring and nurturing the human spirit. That is, that is at the core of everything we do. And so as we did the, the Starbucks Technology IND Council, that was the spirit that we all came together and we said we can do more for uh, for underrepresented communities and bring more people into our industries such a powerful start all right so one thing that i know is that you call employees partners and i'm just curious about that it's different it's unique and um, i want to hear the story so share the journey and mission behind this uh jen do you want to take that one we often say at Starbucks that we aren't in the coffee business serving people, but we're in the people business serving coffee. And our partners, which is what we call our employees, are really the heart of our business. And as Sean mentioned, you know, our mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. But, you know, we call our corporate offices in Seattle, the Starbucks Support Center for a reason. We are here at not just technology, but all of our corporate um, staff. We're here in support of our baristas and our partners in the stores. Um, you know, without them, there wouldn't really be a need for us. So this is very intentional. And, you know, as partners, we share ownership of our company, but it's it's more than that. It's, you know, we uplift each other um, because that's what partners do. And so this is really something that you'll see throughout every facet of our business is, is putting partners first and reminding ourselves that we're um, servant leaders and we're here to, you know, uplift and support each other. The very first takeaway that's coming to me just sinking in is to the power of words. So powerful. Just shifting how we call the people that we work with every day, partners, how what you call your support system of, you know, the corporate workplaces and supporting people. That's awesome. Sean, I'd love for you to talk about the change culture initiatives that you're doing, specifically the words and actions matter. There was it was a it was a bit very pivotal time in a lot of our lives over the course of, of really the last three or four years as the Black Lives Matter movement moved forward, and one of the things that our uh, a couple of our leaders discovered was that some of the words and actions that uh, that even that Starbucks has, but our entire industry, 
has are not inclusive. And we are working very hard right now to to change some of those words, change some of those words around the world. If one person is offended and won't speak in a meeting because we're talking about a, a cybersecurity penetration test, then that that has to change. And so something that we've done um, through the leadership of Andy Kirkland and our VP for uh, business and data services, Rajesh Naidu, is we basically come up with a list of, of things that we're changing the words inside Starbucks. I just mentioned penetration tests being one of them. That is that that doesn't really give you a, a lot of valuable uh, information. Um, just the word itself, it really is a vulnerability and exploit test. So when we contract for an external party to do a test of our systems that we just created, it's called a vulnerability and exploit test. There's other there's other words. Uh, we don't use blacklist and whitelist anymore to 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 identify a deny list and a, and an allow list. We just use a deny list and allow list. Uh, that just it, it seems a lot a lot more simple. And honestly, when when we're going and we're talking to our executives, when we're talking to our CEO, what makes a lot more sense to him is an allow list or a deny list. Not kind of this this vernacular such as a blacklist or whitelist. There's other there's other words and and actions. And the actions it really comes in is that whenever someone says something. In a meeting, it doesn't matter who they are at Starbucks. And a lot of us come from different backgrounds. A lot of us come from different areas of the country where some things have crept into our, our, our just into our, uh, our English speech. Things like peanut gallery is it's anyone who's actually researched that. It's, it's very offensive. But if, if, a, if even if a leader says that, then the action is stop the meeting. And, and, and let's have, have a real quick conversation about what that is. And there's a learning moment there. No one takes it as someone's being called out, even though they are being called out, but it's, it's a learning moment. And so that's the actions. Uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing, um, and we have done, we've worked with Gartner. We've worked with the RSA conference. Our CISO will be having a keynote address at RSA conference this year with a few other CISOs to talk about the words and actions matter. We're bringing this out to other aspects, especially in cybersecurity, because a lot of these words, kind of weird, a lot of these words are actually in cybersecurity. But there are other other things, and I'll let I'll let Jen talk a little bit about some of the some of the other uh, other words that we've we've noticed and we're we're working on. There's some initiatives that we've got around our green thread strategy, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but trying to up-level our code source repositories with using evolved language. So replacing master with main, et cetera. So, I mean, we're, we're doing this intentionally within our business, but then as Sean mentioned, also trying to be leaders in our industry and, and encouraging other companies and the industry at large to grasp onto this and evolve our language. So powerful. So, you know, just leading in, in your first couple of moments, you know, bringing to our awareness how powerful words are, and then really getting an understanding of that intentional awareness behind our words and what those do to make others around us feel either part of or not, you know? And so just, this is so deep already. And just really, really grateful for, you know, all that you've been learning and what you're doing and sharing with us. Sean, I know you have a deep purpose-driven intention to impact vendors and to impact the communities that you serve. Can you talk a little bit more about that personally and what you all are doing as a team? We engage and I engage personally with several organizations such as Mission Fulfilled 2030, Engage Mentoring as the uh, minorities in cybersecurity. And what I'm doing in the, in those spaces is offering assistance, offering mentorship, offering up my entire network. I have a network of around 3,000 other cybersecurity leaders, uh, CISOs. And whenever I hear about someone who maybe is struggling to get their foot in the door, I'll make that introduction to another CISO. I'll say, hey, listen, I'd love for you to meet this person that I've been working with. Love for you to, to engage with this person. My goal is while bringing people into Starbucks is I want to work with everybody I work with <laughs> externally, 
but my goal is not necessarily to increase uh, increase numbers artificially numbers inside Starbucks, but it is to increase the engagement of minorities in my entire industry. So that is the goal of of a lot of what we're doing. So as a as a just a, a reminder, Starbucks is people first and planet positive. So sustainment efforts and and people first, right? So we offer uh, at ASU, we have something called SCAP Scholars. So if you if you work in a in a Starbucks store, you qualify for a four year education through the Arizona State University program we've we've implemented. That is huge. We've we have stores in some underrepresented areas that people are using that in order to get that college education. Those are people who are, are figuring out a way to make it work and they're they're coming to Starbucks and they're working with Starbucks. We get the value that they provide in everyday interactions with our customers and they also get a huge value in in a college education. And Jen, you mentioned the green thread strategy. I'm intrigued. I bet many of our listeners are. Can you give us the story behind this name and unpack this strategy for us? The green thread, Nikki, is really just an analogy that we use for the common thread that ties us all together. And it's just kind of a way of thinking of our partner journey from hire to retire. So it's all the phases, you know, that you would experience as a Starbucks partner from interviewing to onboarding to career advancement and beyond. Our IND council, um, which has representation from all across our technology organization at various levels and, and different functions, we really use this framework to think about our partners' experience within Starbucks tech. And we identified ways that we could drive deeper inclusion all along the journey. So at various different phases. So an example would be during the welcome phase or the interviewing stage, we're rewriting job descriptions to be more inclusive. So there's a lot that we could do along the green thread, but we wanted to start with some really intentional and kind of tactical things, honestly, that we could do to to infuse that inclusion all along the experience. The other thing I mentioned, like uh, we talked about with the words matter is, you know, updating our source code repositories for for using evolved language. We've, uh, Sean has done great work establishing partnerships with HBCUs so that we can not only see those as a an, an additional source for recruiting, but really partnering and what can we do to give back and perhaps lead a workshop or some interview skills tips for students. So we're, we're working through those and um, that's really what the green thread is. It's, it's, It's our partner experience, and then we're taking that very intentionally to look at where can we drive deeper inclusion for our technology partners. The story and the image is powerful, just how you illustrated, you know, you could just see it. And it's just um, a really powerful, like seeing that thread among all the people is, is really great. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, and and when you when you consider some of the things that that we're looking at, and some of the things that some other companies are looking at, going down through looking at all of your um, looking at all of your job descriptions, making sure that they have uh, they are they are neutral. They are neutral from not only specific gender pronouns, but also neutral from gender scoping type information. Going through and making sure that uh, you you highlight and you say. These are preferred qualifications, but that doesn't mean you need to meet every one of them. Studies have shown that 78% of women who are applying for tech roles, if they do not meet every single one of the, the qualifications, then they don't even apply. Changing some of the some, some of the language around our job descriptions to highlight that and that, you know, listen, we want to talk to you. Some of the things that we do is uh, we have we have hire we're, we're working on hiring manager training to understand that. Uh, the idea of culture fit is is not something that you really necessarily hear that much at Starbucks in the hiring process because that's not really great for bringing in new new diverse of thought and diverse of character and diverse of background candidates. Yeah, and we're really thinking more about culture ad, right? So how can we add to our culture, which is strong at Starbucks, but we can make it better by adding more, not just trying to fit everyone into the same bucket. 
That's great. And along the lines of the green thread strategy, I was curious if both of you have a story that comes to mind of impact because of the green thread initiatives. This story was born and we've seen it then affect so many lives or this one person's life. I didn't know if you'd have a short story that comes straight to the top of your mind to share. A few years ago, I was interviewing a candidate and I had a recruiter reach out to me out of band, uh, a personal phone call and said, Sean, I just want to make sure you understand before you meet this candidate, she's trans. That's fine. It's cool. I'm, I'm interested in talking to her about her technical abilities. It's great. You know, she identifies as a woman. I understand. It's great. Um, I'm so excited. And that kind of made me realize like, hey, listen, we need to, we need to, we need to do a little bit more training about how to be really inclusive and have that equity in our engagement. So that was, that was one of the reasons that, uh, that I really, kicked into uh, overdrive in um in my own inclusion and diversity moment and passion. Jen, do you have one to add? To be honest, um we are getting started on some of these initiatives. So, I wouldn't say we're we're fully um rocking and rolling on everything yet, but the thing that's been the most exciting to me is that the initiatives that we're working on, although this is a main focus for my job, We've got what we're calling Green Thread Champions that are from our IND Council. These are folks that have volunteered, raised their hand, said, yes, I want to help, such as Sean, and help drive these efforts um, to fruition. And so they have other jobs. They have day jobs. They understand this is important to help create the culture at Starbucks that we want to see and that we all want to be a part of. So that in and of itself has been awesome for me to experience just the enthusiasm and the dedication that I'm seeing all across our organization of people understanding the importance of inclusion and belonging and wanting to do what they can to to help create that culture and environment and make it stick. And I know you guys have some major efforts around partner growth. Jen, do you want to share more about that and how you're intentionally casting a wider net in recruiting partners? Like many businesses, uh, we have proven to ourselves over the last couple of years that we can work remotely and still successfully deliver on all of our commitments. That's not to say it hasn't come without some pain points and and lots of change and being nimble and and pivoting. (laughs) So we know that there are barriers to living here for folks relocating, right? Both in cost of living, community and support systems. So you know, we figured why not meet people where they are. Over the last year, we've hired many technologists that do not live in Seattle. um, And we have now really targeted efforts to grow um, our tech teams in Chicago, where we already have a brand presence with a a gorgeous roastery and an established regional office. um, And we know there's awesome tech talent there. Um, As well as Phoenix, where uh, Sean mentioned, we have our technology center where we've partnered closely with Arizona State University. So those are two locations where we're very intentionally trying to grow our tech teams. We know they're inherently more diverse than Seattle. And why not let people stay where they are and, and help build an awesome team? So those are two examples where we're, you know, casting a wider net, so to speak. And Sean, you had alluded to this earlier, and I know from a past conversation that prioritizing networking is big for you. I love that. I've spent a lot of my career in that space, and I'd love for you to tell us why this is a priority and how you're helping partners to build relationships in your team and beyond. So I've been speaking at um, at cybersecurity and STEM conferences for uh, for a lot of a lot of my career. And one of the things that I've noticed is how much that actually gives me in, in getting to know different people in different parts of the country and getting and building a big network. And so um, about four years ago, I made a determination that I was not going to prioritize my speaking at these conferences anymore, but I was going to uh, assist our partners in speak at conferences. So that manifests itself in several different ways. I help the ISC squared, which is a, a credentialing body in um, cybersecurity. I help them with their conference every year. I help build abstracts for people. Also, I am on the program committee for the for the RSA conference. So I get to pick the uh, pick the tracks, 
if you will, for the cloud security and virtualization security, which includes like Kubernetes and, and container technologies. And so what I've done is I'm working to try to get more people, more people from Starbucks technology to go speak at these conferences. Because the more people that speak at the conferences, the more people understand that, hey, that coffee company, I was, I, I was listening and there was a guy up there talking about some really in- interesting stuff they were doing in Kubernetes, in containers, in sustainability with our computing. And so that actually helps us in our recruiting efforts. Uh, whenever I was hired, uh, Starbucks had taken, they took 18 months before they found me. Our mean time to hire now is much lower in our group. We're talking uh, weeks and not even months anymore. And uh, I attribute a lot of that to us getting out, getting in front of people, talking to people at Afrotech, at, uh, like I said, RSA conference, at small meetups, uh, sending our our partners out into the world. Number one, it enriches their careers and their lives because they get to meet a whole lot of new great people. And it also enriches Starbucks. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And before I ask you to share some various meaningful learnings and outcomes that have come from the COVID challenges that you all in the world have have uh, endured, because I know many different learnings and, and new things have come from that, and we can't wait to hear your learnings. A couple of things that you shared that I just love for you to elaborate on, so whoever wants to take it. I know you talked about building an inclus- inclusive culture where Two of your keywords were vulnerability and flourish. And I was just curious where those two words came from and choices and like bring that to life and how that shows up in the day to day with encouraging your people to be more vulnerable or how leaders do that or the flourish word as um, how you're really shaping the culture. In terms of the vulnerability, you know, we ask our leaders to, um, you know, constantly seek feedback. And one of the things that we ask all of our partners to do is, is think about pushing the status quo. So Sean mentioned when he talked about words and actions matter, the words matter, but the actions matter too, right? So if we want to actually change, you've got to create an environment where you've got a junior person in the room that can speak up against a more senior person in the room and call out some something that didn't feel right or that that didn't sound right. And that's not a matter of, you know, shaming or anything, but as Sean mentioned, a learning moment. But that that takes some vulnerability um, on both parts, right? For the more junior person in the room to to speak up and also um, for the leader to recognize that this is this is in service of creating a more inclusive culture. The other thing that I would add, Nikki, is that, like I said, I've worked at at several organizations. And whenever I say Starbucks lives its mission and values, one of the things that I mean by that is what you deliver is equally as important as how you deliver it. So if you're on the far Y scale of performance, delivering a lot of really great technology, but you're not delivering that in the mindset of mission and values, you're not successful here. So how you deliver technology is just as important and likely more important in Starbucks culture as what you deliver. And that's powerful. I think in terms of the word flourish, also, um, we talked a little bit earlier about bringing more technologists into our organization and, you know, adding to our culture, having a more diverse talent at Starbucks. But it's great to bring more folks in. We want them to stay. We want them to be able to grow and advance their career and move around and move up the ladder. And so, you know, one of the other things we're doing within Starbucks Tech is looking at what are all the ways that we can actually help folks have additional opportunities, whether it's exposure to other leaders, networking, as Sean mentioned, using the information we have to help folks advance in their career. And that's the flourishing, right? It's it's not just bringing folks in, but actually staying and helping us build a, a wonderful tech organization. So that is also very intentional. Before we transition to our lightning round, which is the final part of our show, I'd love for you to share some of those COVID learnings that particularly have helped the business become even more purposeful through some of the challenges. One of the big learnings is that we were a company that was primarily office-based 
And there were, we, we were always ready. Anyone could work from home on, just work with your manager on any day. So all of the technology was in place. But one of the big learnings I think that we all got, it wasn't in from a technology perspective, but it was from a people perspective. And that is when everyone is on screen, you'll notice that the more introverts, more introverted on your team, they they find a way to, to be able, maybe uh, turn their camera off a little bit more because they're uncomfortable. One of the learnings that I got was, and we use Teams. Um, we love Microsoft Teams at Starbucks. But there's been times where whenever I'm doing a team meeting that I just, I make it a phone call. I don't make it a Teams call. So, you know, everyone unplug, go outside, sit on your patio, sit on your porch. Let's all just talk and and, and soak up some sun because we're in Seattle and we don't always get the sun, especially during the winter time or or even in, in until until late spring. And uh, that's been that's been really well received. You know, just like hey, let's while we're talking, let's unplug just a little bit because we're always on screens, and that that um, the frustration and and the anxiety that that kind of can cause can be also palpable for the team that we have. And let's be inclusive. Let's talk to our people. And I noticed that as I did that, those those team members who didn't necessarily want to be on screen as much were actually a lot more comfortable just speaking up on just a phone call. So it's kind of helpful. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, one of the things I think we learned right at the beginning is that um, we are a pretty meeting heavy culture. So when we were all in person meeting a lot, there was often a, an aspect of some socialization at the beginning of the meeting. And that seemed to kind of go away when we all started working remotely. We were on calls and going from, you know, back to back teams, meeting calls all day long. And I think Sean's got a great example of, you know, just getting off camera sometimes, but also some teams have really, they don't want to lose that personal connection, right? Because that's, uh, that's what makes it special, makes it exciting to go to work, makes you want to do a good job for your team, keeps people tied together. So we've seen a lot of teams actually just purposefully connect just to connect, maybe like once a week, not, and it's optional. It's not uh, required by any means, but really just continue with that human connection and not lose that so that, you know, you have a meeting where you're just, let's hear about your weekend and tell me about your dog and how was your kid's football game. And that has been really important um, to kind of help keep our sense of community and partner first environment. So that's, uh, we've seen a lot of teams do that. And I think people appreciate it. It's just a way to, you know, we're spending a lot of time with our coworkers. So it's good to keep the human element in there. Well, Jen and Sean, this has been beautiful. It really, there's so much beauty in the work that you're doing to make the world better. And, you know, the time that we spend working just filled with meaning. So much purpose in this leadership that you're doing. And I think that the beginning, when we kicked off, the words that were coming to mind from the time that we spent before the, before recording today was around conscious leadership and that conscious leadership thread is just so strong today as well. So just incredible efforts. And I think a lot of mentorship was shared to inspire our listeners here in a minute. I'm going to allow you to share, you know, the best way for our listeners to stay in touch, but this is a great time to transition to uh, our quick sponsor message. And we'll come back to our lightning round where we'll get to learn just a little bit more about both of you and then how our listeners can connect with you after the show. We'll be right back. Gut Plus Science has just joined the People Forward Network. Gut Plus Science has been on a journey for three and a half years, and we got inspired to create a global podcast network that captures the most incredible efforts of people-first leaders and humans working on a meaningful mission. We believe that the workplace is the largest mission field for change, and the People Forward Network is the largest community of humans on a shared journey to live life full of meaning. We'd love for you to join the People Forward Network. There are all kinds of new shows and existing shows coming together under one umbrella to bring you the best content as a community on a mission. Can't wait for you to join us. See the link to peopleforwardnetwork.com in the show notes. 
All right. We're back on Gut Plus Science. It's been a wonderful conversation today. Both Jen and Sean have just poured into purposeful inclusion, which was the purpose of our talk today. So I hope everyone has had some great nuggets. And now we're going to spend some time just learning about the personal side of both Jen and Sean. And so we'll just let both of you tag team these questions. How about a favorite book of all time or a favorite recent read? My favorite recent read is a book that I just received last week, and it is The CISO Evolution by Matthew Sharp and by Rock Lambros. It is a wonderful text about um, really about business knowledge for cybersecurity executives. As we move up into through our career field as technologists, we don't always fully understand the uh all of the the business terms and how how best to relay our the the value of our cybersecurity programs to uh, executive leadership and that's what this book is all about. It's wonderful. How about you, Jen? A recent great read was the Trevor Noah Born a Crime, and I'll, I'll be honest, I read about half of it and then I switched over to the audiobook because he narrates it and um, it just adds so much. But it was fabulous, and I think that um, and, and highly entertaining first of all, but also kind of just tying back to our conversation today. Um, you know, one of the main themes of that book is that he was he's able to connect with people because of language and um, his ability to speak language, multiple languages and connect with folks from all different walks of life. That's been kind of like a, a successful mechanism for him to to use throughout his life. So it, I just actually was thinking of that, how that really ties into you know words and how much they matter. What about a favorite hobby when you're not working? Okay. Well, I do love to garden and um, I am not the most green thumb, but I'm getting there. I've definitely improved over the last five or so years, but I, I love to do a lot of pots and plants. And so I'll be getting mine ready soon for the spring planting. So that's something I like to do. Get outside, dig in the dirt a little bit. For me, um, I just love traveling. Love traveling so much that me and my family built our own RV, and we take that overland traveling all across the U.S., and um, that's that's really, really valuable to unplug and also to plug. Uh, so uh, with the pandemic now, uh, the great thing about being able to work from home means you can work from anywhere you have network. Sean, I'll let you kick off with how about a favorite vacation spot? I love all of the national parks in Utah, uh, Arches, Zion, Bryce, all of those national parks and and areas are so beautiful and wonderful to completely just get away from it all. Canyonlands. So I love pretty much anywhere that there is sun, especially during the months of January and February. As I mentioned, we live in Seattle. Jen, how about you? Also love to travel, um, both U.S., but also internationally, and I uh, was fortunate enough to just take a trip to Croatia last fall, um, which was phenomenal. Um, highly recommend it. Also it was sunny there, but we like to travel, especially if we're going to Europe in shoulder season. The weather's still good. The crowds are not too bad, but the people were super friendly. We were in Dubrovnik, and it's it's just, it was gorgeous, and was definitely a highlight of some of our European travel that we've done. And then how about the best way for listeners to connect with you after the show? LinkedIn for me would be great. Um, So happy to provide those details, but um, would love to connect and um, learn from folks. So please reach out. LinkedIn and or Twitter for me. Jen Morales, Sean Harris, thank you. You're doing outstanding work to lead inclusion. Here's my truth you can act on from our discussion today. Number one, I alluded to this in the beginning. Words are so powerful from what we call things or how we reference them to the words we choose to use in our conversations and how they make people feel. Be intentional with your words from how you name things and how you converse and beyond. Starbucks Technology calls the people who work there partners for a reason. How empowering. Number two, we hear the phrase culture fit a lot, but Starbucks technology calls it culture add. What would be added if this person joins our team and how can we add to them culture add, intentionally incorporating uniqueness to grow and not just a bunch of the same. And number three, encourage your people of all levels and titles to network and build relationships. Relationships are the crux of any workplace or movement for that matter. We'll see you next time. We 
we just left the world a little bit better. Now go do something with it.